Today we will be discussing the planning and evaluation of community dental health programs. Again, it is a long note and very important topic. Uh, before moving on, we'll uh, let's uh, start with the planning. Why we need planning? Planning is, uh, in a simple words, looking forward. Planning is a systematic approach of defining any problem. It makes us to know where we are and where we should be. It does it plays a vital role uh, to avoid mistakes and makes us a uh, many opportunities. It gives us many opportunities for the learning. With this, we'll uh, see the definition. It is defined as a systematic approach to define a problem, setting priorities, developing program goals and objectives, and determining the alternative strategy for the methods of implementation. Yeah, it is systematic approach. It will setting priorities. Priorities should be given to whom, whether they are in big need or not. Develop program goals. Goals again, it is a desire towards uh, what we have to achieve. Again, in other words, plan is a decision about the course of action. This definition was given by B.C. Banfield. Or it is a blueprint for the action to be taken. Now, where there are various types of planning. First is problem solving problem. This uh, type of planning is to solve a community problem. See, if there is a problem of fluorosis in a community, what we will do? We will plan a program so that the fluorosis can be stopped. So, we can do that by defluoridation or will instruct people to have not to use fluoride in excess then there is school based program planning now if you want uh, to do any fluoride uh, example of uh, this uh, school based program planning is that you can give a fluoride supplement so fluoride application to the school children where the prevalence of dental caries is very high so school based program planning can be done coordination of efforts and activities planning the best example is that uh, closing of pediatric wards in the area where there is declining birth rate obviously when the birth rate is declining there won't be any uh, need of any pediatric wards planning for allocation of resources many uh, planning can be done for the to identify the resources or we can uh, get like uh, uh, example I will give you uh, allocation of resources if there is an area where we are uh, in a school so take a example for school whether there is uh, dental caries in uh, the prevalence of dental caries is very high. We are applying fluoride application, but the economic status is not good though because of fluoride application will be costing more. So we can replace that fluoride application through a sealant replacement. So it will be beneficial for both of them and the allocation of resources can be done. Now what is the purpose of planning? The purpose of planning is to minimize the wasteful expenditure or to eliminate or to uh, to match the limited resources available with many problems. Importance of planning, it will uh, to secure all around the socioeconomic development of the country. Exactly, it should be uh, more useful for the development of a country. The importance of planning to secure all around all around socioeconomic development of the country. Now the planning cycle includes uh, total uh, few steps. Uh, these are identifying the problem in identifying the problem there are again divided into uh, three subtypes conduct a need assessment collect a data and analyze the data after analyzing the data we have to determine the priorities after determining the priorities you have to develop a goals objectives and activities after that you identify the available resources identify the constraints and identify the alternative strategy after that in, do an implementation strategy implementation and then monitor evaluation and monitoring and again, you can re-monitor or re-evaluate the things after the completion of your uh, plan. Now coming to our first uh, step, identifying the problem. Now before pl planning, you have to understand what is the basic need, what is the problem the people facing in a particular area. For that, you have to conduct a need assessment. For need assessment, you know, have to know the population size. Uh, educational status, nutritional value, whether the fluoride supplements has been provided to the water, uh, whether the water fluoridation is there, uh, age, socioeconomic status is all the reason we need to have a, uh, conduct a need assessment and the need of the community, what exactly they want and what should we uh, can do to identify the problem. Now next is uh, collection of data, again there are various methods, there are two types of uh, methods for collecting data, these are qualitative data and quantitative data. Qualitative data is the data which is related to the attributes like age, gender, ethnicity, race. Whereas uh, quantitative data is the data which is obtained through the measurement like uh, recording of uh, recording of uh, blood pressure through spec manometer 
uh, by arch with the determination or with the use of caliber this is the quantitative data now the factors which must be kept while collecting the data we need to know the population size whether the population where we are collecting the data is of that importance or not for the purpose of our study development of program goals and objectives uh, goals are the uh, desire toward which the objectives are achieved Pro objectives can are precise it can be achieved it, it can't be achieved uh, in objectives there should be four types there should be in the what is the extent who are the uh, population to whom we are doing all these things uh, before uh, while development of goals we have to achieve now goals is a uh, again a thing before the planning study what exactly we have to achieve then third step is resource identification resource identification is the availability of the manpower availability of the funds whether the labors will be there or not manpower will be sufficient for the planning of the services identifying the constraint constraints are in simple words are the people who are restriction or making uh, the pro flow of uh, pro plan or the flow of the program they are obstructing then there is alternative strategy once the programs now uh, identifying the constraint the constraints can be due to the poly political agencies or the political members anti-social elements which don't want the program to run uh, nicely uh, these are the constraints identifying the alternative strategy when the constraints has been identified we can uh, develop an alternative strategy so that we can overcome those uh, planning processes next is implementation implementation is defined as the uh, it is the plan which we we'll, uh, which we will be making very practical then monitoring it's also known as continuous surveillance 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 is a watchover of a program for example you can see the mortality and morbidity uh, uh, rate of an uh, people and while it compared to the monitoring monitoring is a continuous watchover of the ongoing program in surveillance you will just come you will watch and you will go well while the monitoring is continuous uh, watch over of the program now evaluation evaluation may be defined as a collection and analysis of information to determine the program performance measures the progress and effectiveness of the each activity rendering health services more relevant and more effective and efficient this is the last step uh, the uses are uses for better planning filling the drawbacks once the planning is completed we can know what are the drawbacks and what after, while evaluating we can know the drawbacks proper utilization of the resources components are appropriateness of the program appropriateness of the program is that whether the program what we are doing is appropriate or not whether it will fulfill all the desired things which we want to achieve adequacy the plan the appropriate uh, program what we have whether it is adequate it will be fulfilling the extent or degree of each uh, thing Efficiency is again come whether the program we are doing is as, as efficient for the uh, people or not and effectiveness after that we will uh, uh, see the program the program which we have planned is has been given the long term impact or effectiveness is there or not. There are few types of evaluation a relevance evaluation formative evaluation summative evaluation summative evaluation will have effectiveness impact and efficiency evaluation coming to our relevance uh, evaluation in simple word whatever we are planning whether it is relevant or not then comes your formative evaluation it is an internal evaluation and it's a, it has done on the ongoing process summative evaluation judges the merit or worth of the program after it has been in operation uh, the advantages are it is acceptable to the community it uh, helps in evaluating the goals to continue or terminate the programs effective evaluation uh, is defined as refer to the program result in need predetermined objectives and focus on immediate program outcome whether the evaluation as effective uh, uh, whether it is effective or not impact is a long term relationship like for example we have added a fluoride in drinking water so that the impact evaluation will be uh, there will be long term reduction of dental caries in, in that area efficiency evaluation is an attempt to relate the results obtained from the specific program to the resource expanded to maintain the program while uh, now coming to our conclusion uh, planning is again plays a vital role to avoid the mistakes and it gives an opportunity of the learning it makes us to know whether we where we are and where we should be uh, again it is a systematic approach it can be used for 
socio economic development in fact development of our country this will like to end uh, the lecture thank you